Buenos dias, y'all. RGT85 here. Hope everyone's having a great day. But of course, we've got some video game news to talk about. A couple stories going on that I definitely want to cover. First time on the channel, hit that subscribe button, like, share, turn the bell on, all that stuff. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. And we're going to start things off with the Capcom announcement. Yesterday on the channel, we of course talked about the fact that Capcom had some countdown on one of their websites and there was going to be a big reveal. I said I didn't feel it was going to be Street Fighter 6. I thought it was going to be something Resident Evil related and I was wrong it, it was Street Fighter 6 kind, kind of because what we ended up getting last night that happened on 1 a.m. East Coast time was definitely a bit of a letdown for a lot of people it was it was very confusing and I feel like it was disappointing now Street Fighter 6 it really shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone that this is a game that that does indeed exist like uh, Street Fighter is one of the most popular and successful fighting franchises of all time it's been quite a while since we had Street Fighter 5 many many years it came out early on the PlayStation 4 so it it made sense to be talking about a Street Fighter 6, but they did like a little 35 second teaser trailer and then they showed the logo for the game. And I have some things to say about it. The logo honestly looks like the most generic Western game of like all time. Like this looks like this should be the logo for like a, a, a generic first person shooter. There's there's no pizzazz, there's no flair, there's no sort of Street Fighter, you know, style font. It looks very barren and boring and just, I, I don't know. Like uh, logos usually don't bother me, but when it's a game, the size and the scope of Street Fighter 6, it, it just looks weird to me. It looks it looks very weird, and it, it doesn't seem like it's necessarily indicative of the game, but when you actually look at the game, the game does sort of have a completely different graphical style, and I'm not I'm not quite sure I, I like it. Like Ryu is like a, a big wide body dude, looks like Rich Piana, the bodybuilder guy. Like, and I, I get it, you know, the Street Fighter characters have definitely gotten, you know, a bit over the top over the years, but it looks like they're over the top with a realistic aesthetic. And I'm not quite sure how that will work out. Obviously, the big thing with Street Fighter is, of course, the, the fighting combat in the game, the actual gameplay mechanics. So I'm not super worried about it, but I do think the graphical style looks weird. I mean, I'm just gonna keep it a buck. I think it looks weird. I think the logo looks absolutely atrocious and it just looks so boring and bland. And I hope that's not indicative of the game because yes, Street Fighter is an amazing game in terms of gameplay, but I, I like some of the over-the-top stuff. I mean, you can't really throw a Hadouken in, in a realistic setting, and if you can, I guess I guess you should be, like, being studied by scientists or some shit. I don't know. But, I don't know. This was kind of a bit of a disappointment. 35 seconds just to say, hey, we're going to have more information in the summer. You know, kind of, kind of a bit of a letdown. But they actually did announce something else that for me was actually more exciting than the Street Fighter 6 reveal. And that is a Capcom fighting games collection that they are going to be releasing. This comes out on June 24th. Kind of think of the beat em up collection that they did. And this is kind of similar. Looking over the games list, you have Dark Stalkers, Night Warriors, Vampire Savior, Vampire Hunter 2, Vampire Savior 2, Red Earth, Cyberbots, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Hyper Street Fighter 2, and Super Gem Fighter Mini Mix. All these games will have online play with rollback netcode, meaning that it'll run a lot better than a lot of these other games currently do you will have different sorts of matches with casual ranked and custom matches that you can do there's going to be a museum in the game there's all sorts of little trinkets and whatnot in the game and a ranking system like this this looks awesome this looks great and i saw this and i was like well you know what this this to me this to me is much more exciting than what we saw from Street Fighter 6. I love compilations like this. This will be available on all platforms. So PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch as well. And I love these compilations. I, I do think it's kind of strange that, you know, Capcom does have a few fighting games that they just act like don't exist. Games like Power Stone and stuff like that. I think Power Stone in the modern era would be a lot of fun. But this announcement to me was like way more exciting. You know why? Because it's tangible. I can see these games. I can see what you're doing. You're telling me what these are including. I don't get this whole sort of thing that these companies like to do nowadays of like a freaking, you know, just this title screen. We saw it with Elder Scrolls 6. We saw it with Metroid Prime 4. Nobody likes this. Okay, nobody likes this stuff. Like, yeah, it's cool to know that the game is in development, but you could simply go out on Twitter and say, hey, the game's in development. We'll show you something when we can. Instead of making people wait and wait and wait. Like, you, you saw this 35 seconds of Street Fighter 6, and now you have to wait till the summertime. Metroid Prime 4, who the hell knows when you're going to see that? Elder Scrolls 6, same thing. Who the hell knows when you're going to see that? So, I, 
I don't know. I guess it gets people talking. So I guess I can sort of understand why from a business perspective companies do this. But for me, it's just it's it's a letdown. It's disappointing. I want to see stuff. I want to see stuff from the game. Show me something substantial from the game. So yeah, Street Fighter 6, it's real. It's coming, maybe. We'll learn about it more in the summer. Yay. Yay. And finally, when it comes to studios making new renditions of old games, I think one of the best in the marketplace is, of course, Night Dive Studio. When you look at their catalog of games, I mean, they've done some phenomenal work with older games, games like Quake. I mean, Quake got a huge shot in the ass when they remade Quake and they remastered it and it just plays so good no matter what platform you're playing it on. Of course, they've done other games like Turok 1 and 2, which were really good experiences. They recently did Shadow Man as well. So there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in their catalog. MVG works with them as well. I guess you have to have one British person on there. You know, it's probably like a labor law or something. But yeah, they do a lot of good work. They do a lot of interesting work, but it seems like they want to do more and they're targeting one company and that company is actually Nintendo. Because when you look at Nintendo, they have a ton of games that are stuck on old platforms that never get re-releases. Sure, there are a bunch of games. Your Zelda games, your Mario games might get a re-release, but other games, other first-party titles, maybe the more obscure stuff, never gets a second chance at life. And so they want to actually work with Nintendo and bring some of these games from older Nintendo platforms to Nintendo themselves. And this was actually talked about by the CEO of the company, Stephen Kick. And he basically said on Twitter a few days ago that they have talked with Nintendo about the possibility. But in his words, however, Nintendo always gets gun shy working with third party developers, even after Night Dive Studios released the first Nintendo 64 games on their platform, which I mean, it's true. Turok was the first N64 game to come out on the Nintendo Switch before the Switch Online service. And let's be real, the version of Turok is way better than the version of N64 games that we are seeing from Nintendo themselves as far as reworking things like the controls, remastering the visuals, making them cleaner and stuff like that. So, you know, if any company should be able to do something like this, it's Night Dive. And it's nice to see that they're at least in talks with Nintendo about bringing back some of these classic Nintendo games that have never gotten a re-release or a remaster for their modern platform. Now, where things get very interesting is Kick was also asked what game he wants to see the most from the old Nintendo games to be brought to the modern platforms. And his game that he wants to do the most is actually Eternal Darkness. Now, Eternal Darkness was, of course, a game that was originally being worked on for the N64. It ended up moving over to the GameCube. And I mean, one of the best horror games of all time. The writing in the game is absolutely phenomenal. You visit different time frames and sort of live through other people. There's a lot of stuff like the sanity meter that makes you go absolutely crazy and it affects how the game plays itself. And I think this is a game that definitely needs to get a, a re-release, a remaster something of that ilk now there are some problems with the actual licensing of the game you know who has the license for the game who has the the claim to the source code i know there's a the dude who like created it tried to make like a spiritual successor that it, it's a really weird story it's very convoluted as well but i feel like you know money talks and if nintendo wanted this to be a thing they could easily make it happen they could easily just pay off the people that they need to pay off in order to have this game get remastered now what's interesting about eternal darkness though is going back to the sanity meter stuff you would actually have to change some of that stuff for modern era stuff because like there was things where like it was based on a CRT TV and things that would only happen on a CRT TV would happen in the game. So you can't really do that with a flat screen television. I mean, I guess you can, but the effect would be just completely lost. And, you know, so it would be interesting to see if they would want to go down that road. But it seems like they are pushing for eternal darkness. Now, whether or not it'll happen, you know, that's, uh, I mean, realistically, there's a small chance, but I do feel like there is a chance because why wouldn't you want to do this? Why wouldn't you want to release a classic game from your old consoles that you're never going to touch again and bring it to the modern era? I think they also need to take a look at Geist. Geist was a phenomenal game. Yes, it was a bit weird when it came to graphics and, you know, the controls felt a little bit weird at times, but at its core, Geist was a phenomenal game. Imagine that game being brought over to the nintendo switch as well from night dive so night dive if you're watching this stupid mvg if you're watching this we want eternal darkness i think everyone wants eternal darkness but if you can't get it push for geist 
okay push for geist because i think geist would be great in the modern era the, the gameplay loop definitely holds up today with some prettier graphics throwing some online multiplayer for the multiplayer component of the game we could have a real hit on our hands but it's nice to see that night dive is at least trying to and is in talks with nintendo about making some of these games reality hopefully nintendo actually explores this hopefully they actually go for this because i think it's lucrative for all sides like who loses in this situation nintendo doesn't have to worry about creating the game themselves somebody else is doing it they'll just make money doesn't everyone like free money i don't understand this company sometimes Alrighty, so that is going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to give me your feedback in the comments section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, share, turn the little stupid bell on. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.